Now then crew, and welcome back to the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Yeah, I know, episode 5 of a toolbox tour. Seriously. I know, there's been lots and lots to get through. This actually isn't really a toolbox tour. Yes, it's a roll cam, and there's a few other drawers we're going to throw in as well. But, it's more to do with the fasteners that I have. Nuts, bolts, tech screws, that kind of stuff. And there's, there's quite a bit of it that I've collected over the years. And you need a decent chunk of arsenal when it comes to nuts and bolts. Um, you know, when you're making stuff. I mean, for example, only yesterday I made that bracket there that takes the new Forge Blue Roll that Jared donated to the workshop. Thanks, Jared. Without those nuts and bolts on hand, things would have been a lot harder. And even with the vast majority that I've got here, and this is the most I've ever had, Still, you don't always have the size that you really want for a job and you've just got to sort of make do. But I live quite rural and what I can't be doing is jumping in the car, going down to the shop, buying what I need and then coming home because by that time, two hours have gone. It's just ridiculous. So, without further ado, let's go and take a look at my arsenal of nuts, bolts, screws, washers, you name it, it's all in there. Here we go. Use. This is a slightly wider roll cab than all the other ones I have. It wasn't bought for this particular job, but it ended up doing this particular job. Um, we've got five drawers that are about 55 mil deep. And in the top drawer, we've got quite a lot of M5 cap heads. Sorry, M6 cap heads. We've got M5 in here. There was an M5. There's an M5 look. I don't really use M5 very much, but we've got M5, that stainless cap head. That's probably about 50 mil long. Uh, quite a range of M6. We've got cap heads, we've got normal bolts. You know, you just you just buy them as you go along, but I usually try now to buy quite a few each time, and that way I don't have to keep replacing them. Um, these over here, I'll just move that out of the way. These are what Ben got me from work. Now, he didn't steal them, don't worry, he's not, in, he's not that way inclined. These basically come with brake discs, rotors for bicycles, and other fitting kits and stuff. And they always end up being surplus. There's always lots and lots of spare bolts. And I use these so often. They're really, really useful. They're actually quite good quality. They're a 5mm Allen key size, metric obviously, with an M6 thread. And they're about, I don't know, 20, 25mm long. Um, there's countersunk ones, there's dome heady type ones there, look. Actually, for, for stuff that's free, very, very useful, so thanks, Ben. Uh, we've also got some big penny washers over there. Uh, we've got, oh, what's in here? So look, in here, I think, stainless steel Nylox M6. They would have been bought for a particular job, and they're the ones that are left over, but, you know, never throw anything away. And... This really is the first time that I've collated all my nuts and bolts into one place. There's even these little tiny cap heads. These came from England. We used to use these for holding a little uh, cover over the rear brake drum on a quad bike. So again, we bought lots of them, didn't use them all, kept them somewhere safe, there for a rainy day. It's pretty good. Right, what else have we got? Oh, there's some serious weight in these drawers. Uh, we've got M8. Now, these come off motorcycle crates that I disassemble, so I've kept those for years. Still got lots left. There's still more boxes kicking around somewhere. Um, there's some more in there. These are, what are these? These are about 30s, I think. All the boxes are different because it's just whatever fits in the drawers. Yeah, 8.8s. I think they're 30s. Where's my ruler? Hang on. Good to know for next time, actually. Probably 40s. No, they are 30s. There we go. Look. I think they're the same. That's the overflowed bit. Uh, we've got some, what are these ones here? Look, they're 40s. Again, M8. 
some have got some are threaded all the way other ones like those of intruders they're not threaded all the way there's even the wrong size in there which is terrible stick him in there look um, these again came from England bought these for a particular job had lots and lots left over those are 60s you know 60 bill long um, I tend to use a lot of standard nuts when I'm doing basic assembly um, and then when I've finished and I've, and I've done, painted all the parts that's when they'll get the nylocks put on um, you don't want to be using a nylock during sort of temporary assembly because obviously it wears the, the nylon parts and it doesn't work as a nylock very well uh, these are stainless these are stainless cap heads uh, again m8 and these are by 50 again not threaded all the way but i can thread them all the way if i want to i'll just run a die down there pretty easy uh these ones i think oh my word it's got a washer stuck on there look see if we can get the washer off we can not what you're supposed to use a ruler for mr people i know but anyway such is life there we are get rid of that um, those were for doing some wooden seats in a porter cabin that we did for a, a changing room for our quad trekking activity. Uh, we've got some more stainless here. I think these are to go on the trailer, actually, the small trailer. That's why we got these. We've got some long ones. These are, oh, they go from the head, I think, don't they? Yeah, they're 60s. And what are these, 40s? Yes, 40s. And then there's a few left. I've been using these quite a lot recently. There's some 30s as well. So, yeah, pretty good. Um, washers very heavy duty washers these are about three mil thick very very thick washers use those a lot very good very happy with those and i get all my nuts and bolts now from a company called asmus uh they've got outlets all over new zealand and the one i use is in taupo right m10 we're getting on to the biggest stuff now now we've we've sort of built the collection of m10 stuff because we've been doing a lot of steel work in the workshop and M10 is really the smallest um, of the bolts that I use for that kind of stuff. Got quite a range actually. Again, all of these, I think these are called uh, blacksmith head bolts, or coach bolts, that's right, coach bolts. Uh, these are 65s, We've got loads of those. And again, we used those in England uh, as part of that porter cabin build. But again, lots of those left. Um, obviously, heaps of nylocks, we use those. Absolutely tons of standard nuts because with Asmus, or oh, this particular brand that they sell, what's it, um, what is it? Milson's, pretty good bolt actually. Um, when you buy a bolt like that, it comes with a pack of 100 nuts. You get a box of 100 bolts, you get 100 nuts with it. As you can see, I don't use anywhere near as many of the standard nuts, I tend to use nylocks for the final job. Um, again, we've got the heavy duty washers, use it again, they use those a lot. Um, oh, did that go in the wrong bin? In that one there look so what have we got we've got oh, 30s i think they might be 30s as well yeah they are 30s we've got 60s we've got 70s we've got 75s and i used all the 80s up yesterday so there were only four left so i've used those that's why that box is empty uh there's a few more sort of random bits and pieces down here Different, you know, various sizes. We've got a, an 80 there. Look, just what, just, just, just the old balls, really. These ones came from the UK. They're 80s as well. Uh, not zinc plated. I actually prefer the black ones, to be honest. But you can't really get them over here. Pretty hard to come by. Everybody seems to go for the zinc plated stuff. And we've got some 140s for the big jobs. Not many, just a few. Again, surplus. And there's some little cap heads there. Look, been left over from another job. And of course, some more countersunks. I do like using countersunk stuff on steel work. It looks so smart, it really does. And those are 30s. Not many left, but they're actually quite expensive. Now, moving down, how's your view? Not bad. Okay, we've got, we're into the M12 drawer now. And as you can see, I don't have that many M12s. And uh, we've got 40s. We've got 60s, got more 60s. So they're actually the same, so I could you know, merge those two drawers now. And I've got a few of these, they're 35, not many. But I, I don't often use M12s. I've got a lot of nylocks, uh, and we've got some standard nuts, and we've got heaps of the big thick washers. Again, very useful. Oh, back in the pot.
There you go. Now, the interesting draw. I really don't know how interested you guys are in all this kind of stuff, but I do get requests to see what's in the drawers, Andy. So here you go, what's in this drawer? Well, this is sort of the assortment drawer. You've always got to have a drawer that you put stuff in that doesn't really fit in any of the other drawers under those particular categories. Well, what have we got? Well, we've got a ton of, I think these are um, an American thread. Don't use them very often, uh, but they were for a specific bolt uh, that I had that I needed some nuts for. And I still do use those bolts now and again, so it's good to have a stock of nuts. Uh, we've got some screwing eyelets. Not really a bolt, shouldn't really be on this. I have some other drawers now for screws, so we'll leave those out. They'll get relocated. Uh, what have we got in here? Oh, some little washers. We've got some hooks, so again, they can go in the other drawer now. Life is a constant, a constant uh, rearrangement in this workshop. Oh, there's some M6. That looks it. Some weird ones. But yeah, there's all sorts of stuff that just, just happens to come my way, you know. These are... These are from bicycles, or oh, actually from scooters, are these things. These are pretty cool. I'm sure I can make use of these. They've got a, like a dome head at both ends, and they screw inside each other. Here, look. Look at that. So you wouldn't actually have a nut. You just have that, and it looks smart from both sides. So, yeah. It's pretty cool, actually. Again, I think Ben gave me those. Thanks, Ben. One day, they'll get used for a project, and they'll be just exactly what I need. Those are from a lot of Dexian racking that I got. I'm gonna never use those because they're crap quality. I should really throw them out, but I can't bring myself to doing that. These are all the little seals on the tech screws that I buy. I don't use them for roofing, so I take those little seals off because again, one day they might come in handy. Uh, I've got some chain off the lights when they used to be hung on the chains. Uh, they're all rigid mounted now. Um, and a bit of threaded rod. And some electrical connectors, which shouldn't be in this drawer. They should be somewhere else. So we'll take those out. I'll find a home for those. I've got a drawer somewhere for those. And we've got some massive washers. Look at these. Proper size washers, these things. Who knows what the hell I'm going to use those for, or why I've even got them. It's got a code on there, look. F436, made by Heck, H-E-C. Hecky film. Right, and there's a... Only a couple of these left actually, these square washers. They use a lot of these in an awful lot of when they're doing timber builds for decks and stuff. I used a lot of these on the carport. That's probably why there's only two left. Right, well, there's two more drawers and they're not nuts and bolts. Let's have a look. Ah, that's right. Temporary use. We've got disposable overalls on the right. And on this side here, we've got some more M10 stuff, which probably... No, maybe not. That's why, it's, that's why it's not in there. We'll leave those in there. We've got 200 more M10 to 75s. They'll just stay in there for a bit longer. Yet. And then, in the last drawer... Drum roll. Ah, okay, it's being used for power tools at the moment. We've got a little Makita rechargeable screwdriver thing. That's, that, uh, that's actually the bag for it. The actual tool is in another drawer. Uh, we've got a 110 volt Makita impact wrench, which is mains powered, AC powered. And we've got a very old, these came from England actually. I haven't got any batteries from them, that's why they're still here. So I've got a really old Makita, was it 6918D, 12 volt impact wrench, which is probably about 20 years old. It did okay for little jobs. It certainly didn't warrant having a half inch uh, anvil on it, that's for sure. A 3 8 would have been just fine for the kind of power this thing can kick out. But um, yeah, all the batteries died and now it's just sat in the drawer. So if you need one of these and you're happy to pay the shipping, you're welcome to it. You can have this. Send me an email. Tell me why you like the channel so much and uh, maybe I'll send you it. I never use it anymore. Oh, and there's a spare charger, which actually goes with that drill, so you could have the charger as well, couldn't you? Drill, impact wrench, you know what I mean. Right, that's those drawers done. We've got some more to do yet. I haven't bored you to death yet. I, I, don't, I've, I don't make videos normally on nuts and bolts. I really don't. But some of the viewers have asked for this, so I'm giving it to you. If the video gets one view, hurrah, somebody's happy. Um, now, 
There's about 130 drawers in this workshop, maybe a few more now actually. I haven't had a tally up recently, I just keep buying more and more roll cabs and stuff. Now, um, the previous four videos covered basically the bulk of the tools and stuff, um, but there are some, there's three more drawers to my left above the roll cab that we've just done, which sits in the far left corner uh, near all the battery chargers in this particular workshop. And we've got some more drawers which used to be behind the camera, which have now moved, and they are, where's Mr. Finger? They are there, those three, because I had a bit of a shuffle around because I had to fit. In fact, I'll, I'll, I'll show you. I had to fit a glass cabinet I got given to keep things clean. There, look. So I'm going to do a bit, a bit of freehand. So those are the drawers we're going to go into next. Those three, they're like pens and something and some PPE in there. And then up here, oh yes, we've got the pie warmer. Nice. We've got an old box that one of the impact wrenches came in, which is actually completely empty at the moment, but it'll get you. I can't throw it out, so it'll get used for something. We've got one of the battery chargers. We've got another battery charger up there on the wall. And then we've got this glass cabinet, which Ben got me actually from work. It, they were going to throw it out. So he says, oh, do you want a glass cabinet? I said, yes, I'll have that because I can put things in and they'll stay clean. And well, yes, the snap-on box is still messy. Bugger. Okay, let's take a look in those drawers. Right, here goes. I have already gone in these drawers to try and take some stuff out that you can't see. It's all gone now, so don't worry. We're all good. So, top drawer, we've got some pens and charging wires and air fresheners and scissors and staplers. and It's sort of like the top drawer of your desk, really, is how I'd explain this one. We've got a ton of 3M stickers, which um, I don't know why they're in there. Lots of batteries, we've got a spare circuit board for the Makita um, rechargeable batteries. I haven't got any to hand, but yeah, that's what that's for. And uh, more batteries and keys and stickers and you name it, it's all that kind of stuff. Um, and some chewing gum, actually. Cool. Excellent. Right. Let's see what's in the next drawer. Ah, yes. Yeah. So this is my, what is it, Osmo um, device for holding the phone. If I want to do any sort of pans around bikes and stuff. I think it needs charging up, actually. Maybe I should put it on charge. I'll leave that out and put it on charge. It hasn't been charged for ages, so we'll do that. That's a little bag that came with. That's a little clock that I got sent, actually. For my birthday from somebody. A good friend of mine, actually. Sent me a clock. Look at that. I really should find a home in the workshop. Maybe that could live in the cabinet. I'll put it in the glass cabinet later on. Maybe I'll make a little mount for it, so it'll actually put a battery in it. It'll tell the time. Hmm. Cool. Okay, what else have we got? Well, we've got a regio holder for... Um, for motorcycles, not for resale, so of course I won't sell it. We've got some Tall Girl stickers, we've got Holly, and of course Jade as well, look at those. You can get those actually from Zazzle, pretty cool, for your toolbox. Uh, now, Mrs. Mechanic got me a couple of signs for in the workshop, which maybe I'll leave out and put up today actually. We've got, here we are, look, dependable service, spark plugs, mechanic on duty, 32 cents, all brands. It's pretty cheap, isn't it? It's Quite a cool sign too. I need to put that up in the workshop. What else have we got? Tool rules. Don't touch them. Don't borrow them. Don't move them. Don't even look at them. Yes, that definitely needs to go up in the workshop. We'll leave that one out. Uh, oh, vehicle wiring products. That's right. I've got some stuff from England. This is, if you ever need any wiring and switches and that kind of stuff, they've got a massive range. Um, crimping tools, you name it. They've got everything you need, really. It's pretty good. They're called Vehicle Wiring Products, and they're 9 Buxton Court, Manors, Industrial Estate, Ilkeston, in Derbyshire. If I was still in England, I would go and see them, because they do an absolutely brilliant job. Yes, they were very quick at sending stuff out, so that's all their contact details there, but you'll find them on the internet. Pretty cool. And we've just got some random instruction books, so we'll put those back in there. We'll leave the rest of the stuff out, because that needs to be needs to be done and this drawer is labeled up PPE so we've got in here oh yep yeah, some filters for the, my breathing mask I think that one's a brand new kit there look that's pretty good not cheap from 3M but anyway we've got some I don't know some real thick sort of tissue things uh, or oh, some more filters there look as well in the bag all brand new some more spare safety glasses even some little q-tips down there look look at that 
I'll stick that in my ear anymore. Yeah. Right. And yeah, they really should go in the bin, shouldn't they? But I think I've run out. That's why we're keeping those for emergencies. Emergency use only. Right. What's next? Let's have a look. It's actually pretty cool going through these drawers with you because it makes me have to clean them up a little bit. And I know they were quite messy, but they were a lot messy before. And there was a lot of stuff in there that really should be in the office and not in the workshop. Lots and lots of receipts, that kind of stuff. Anyway, next job, let's... Oh, there's some more drawers right underneath where the camera is. So let's take a look in those. Now, this one's labelled up tech screws. Mrs. Mechanic did all, all the drawer labelling for me, which is really cool. I don't spend half my life opening every single drawer in the workshop. And now that we've got dedicated drawers for stuff, things are actually getting put in sort of the semi-right drawers. Now, you might say, Andy... Half of the stuff, in fact, most of the stuff in this drawer is not tech screws. You're absolutely right. These are drawers that are temporarily being put in here from a little, you know, what do you call it? Like a little mini drawer thing, which I decided to throw out because it was nothing but a pain in the ass. So all of this has to be gone through and, you know, put in the right places. But we do have tech screws in here. So the drawer is sort of semi-correct. We've got quite a few different lengths of tech screw. And I use these quite a bit around the workshop. So we've got 75s, we've got, what are these little ones? 25s, we've got some of these here, look. Oh, they've still got the, these are brand new, never used. Because I do tend to recycle them. They're 50s. And, well, they're 50s again. So I must have bought a lot. Ah, oh, these were from doing the carport roof. These are the spare ones. That's pretty cool. And they were very, very cheap. I bought a thousand of these. And they were super cheap. About a hundred bucks. So, basically, that's what's in there. Stuff that shouldn't be in there that's going to get sorted out one day. But at the moment, much easier to find things than it is, uh, you know, pulling little drawers out of a stupid little box on the side of the wall. Like this, you can open the drawer and you can see everything straight away. Much, much quicker. Now, this one is wood screws. What have we got in here? Uh, uh, it's sort of semi, right? Okay, so we've got some little wood screws here, some more. These ones are for um, when you're putting stuff up on jib walls and things. They've got little expander raw plugs. I always keep the right drill bit in there as well. We've got some nails, got some more nails, got some more nails. We've got in here, this is a kit that I bought years ago. We've got some more, oh, some more drill bits. <laughs> oh God, screwdriver bit shouldn't be in there. I'll put that where it should go. Some more screws and raw plugs and some more masonry drills. They shouldn't really be in there either. They should be in my masonry drill bit drawer. So we'll move those. Jeez, honestly, there's so much stuff hiding away. Now then, what's in this one? Let's have a look. Ah, just raw plugs. Excellent, I've got so many raw plugs. It's last me a lifetime, I reckon. Right, so that's that drawer done then. What's next? Self-tapping screws. Okay. Ah, yes, it's been inflicted. It's been taken over by other stuff. So we've got some more little drawers. See so again, you see what lots and lots of little M5 nylocks. Uh, oh, I think Ben got me these. These are some more little countersunk bolts. So all those really should be in the in the the other roll cab in the top, but it's full at the moment. So I'm going to maybe do a drawer for M4, M5, and have a totally separate drawer for M6 as the collection grows. That's the problem with the workshop. Everything's always evolving. Uh, we've got. In here, we've got some self-tappers, sort of remnants of a, of a kit, by the looks of it, that I bought. So I need to sort that out, make some more space. Got some more in there, look. This is, this was a kit from England, actually. Had that a long time. Pretty cool. Um, these are just some little self-tappers. What are those? 6 gauge by 12 mil. And we've got some clips here for doing... What do I use these for? Oh, well, I did the airline, that's right. And I was putting the airline up. Lots and lots of those, that's what they're called there, look. Half saddle zinc, 16 mil. Pretty cool. I don't think they came in that box, though. Oh, yeah, it won't close. <laughs> Makes sense. Right. 
Hmm, power tools, woodwork. Oh, that'll be on a different video, because we're going to do a video on power tools. So, do you want a sneaky peek? I think you probably do. Oh, yeah, there's really not a lot in there, look. There you go. I think it's going to be a very, very long time since I make any videos like this one again. <laughs> I'm only making it because I got asked. If you've got any comments, tell me. Um, okay, so what's left? Well, I think all we've got left now is those three, where is it? Those three drawers just there, look. I can't show you inside that cupboard. It's got lots and lots of secret special stuff in there that you're not allowed to see. Uh, and that's about it. Right, three more drawers to go. Here we go. Now, these haven't even been labelled up yet. There could be anything in these drawers. Oh, my word. Ah, yes, that's right. We've got... This is where I tend to keep most of the correspondence. There's some in the tool girl cupboards, uh, tool girls cupboard as well. But what we've got here is envelopes and stuff that people have sent me over the years. So uh, this one I think was from Simon Raw. Let's have a look. Hopefully I won't show you things on camera that you can't see. That's right. Yes, he sent me some drill. I think it was some center drills for the lathe. Let's have a look what his message was. A year since we've read this. Here we go. Look. Mr. Young, please find enclosed uh, sh uh, some center drill bits, uh, center drills as promised. From a tight Geordie to a tight Yorkshireman, keep up the good mix of videos. Simon. Well, thanks, Simon. You are not forgotten. Simon is a regular viewer to the channel as well. He, he contributes all the time uh, to the point where he often he'll, he'll, if I can't get stuff here in New Zealand, he'll buy it for me in England and ship it across. And very rarely will ever take any payment for it as well, which I find really annoying, but very, I'm very grateful too. Oh, this one is from Eric O. I remember this. Right, let's have a look. Ah, oh, yes. Eric's letter. Is it Eric's letter? It should be Eric's letter, isn't it? Eric's envelope. Let's have a look. Hello, Andy. I couldn't help... That's not Eric, by the way. That was tall girl Hannah. Um, I couldn't help but notice in your last video... That you were that that you were a much better stripper than tall girl Hannah. I'm not sure about that. Uh, <laughs> not sure if you have some explaining to do or not. At any rate, I'm sure these will help to her become a much better stripper. It all comes with time and practice, I'm sure. Oh, and I'm sure if you are nice, she will let you borrow these if you ask nice. Enjoy. Regards, Eric O, South Main Auto, and that was from Hannah to Eric. Good job, tall girl Hannah. I'm sure Eric was very grateful. All right, as long as Mrs. O doesn't find out. Jeez, we'll be in trouble then, won't we? Golly. Right, stick that in there. Right, that's Eric's. I'm not going to go through all of them, but there's heaps here. Uh, oh, Ross, one also. Yeah, there's there's a, a, a multitude of stuff in there, actually. There really is. There's all sorts of stuff. Lots and lots of letters and things. What's down there? Jonathan. Ah, yes. Yes, yeah, Badgertronics. That's right. I remember you sent me a sticker. Who have we got here? Oh, I can't show that. It's got an address on it. Right. Cool. Anyway, we, you get the idea. Lots and lots of different letters in there which I always keep. So if you send something through, you can send it to the PO Box, which is not Wellesley Street anymore. It's actually PO Box 6265, Victoria Street West, Auckland 1142, New Zealand. And you will get a mention on the channel. Yeah, heaps of stuff, honestly. Very, very cool. What else we got? Oh, I've got a few more Nobby stickers left over. We've got a receipt. But give that to the accountant. What did I buy there? Look, I bought oh, a big tarpaulin for $180. I bought uh, some rope for $15.90 and some screws for $35. $231. Holy moly. Right, I'll we'll put that in the receipt pile. Got uh, Charlotte's old calculator. Thank you, Charlotte. Some seals. We've got another sticker. Uh, we've got some more letters and some more knobby stuff, some more paint pens and other bits and pieces, and some special batteries. I think they're for the vernier calipers. I'm pretty sure they are. Oh, and I've got to mention this. This is one of the many key rings that I made 
for our four-wheel drive vehicles that are on the fleet. And this one belonged to a Nissan Patrol. It was a long wheelbase, 2.8 petrol, and we called it Silver Thing, or Silver Thang, we used to call it. Uh, it end, its registration ended in KBM. It was, like I say, a petrol. It's very thirsty, and it cost me, I think, £100. And Silver Thing, we, we felt it was going to break the first time it went out, and it lasted for years. That patrol made me one hell of a lot of money and gave people so many fond memories of off-roading. It was a very, very cool truck. So I keep that in there to remind me that don't always take things on their appearance. Oh, and that's a spring hook. I wonder that I got to. That's a spring hook for doing uh, dirt bike exhaust springs. Very, very useful. Hmm. I forgot it was there, and I'll probably forget it was there again. Right, let's get all these letters put back in, as otherwise it'd be all over the place. What's next? These drawers are full of stories, aren't they? That's the thing. Well, apart from this one. <laughs> so we've got, oh, we've got some feeler gauges. They need to go in my feeler gauge drawer. Jeez, we've got in here, this is actually for doing, um, I can't even get in, it's all glued up, but this is for doing differentials. Ah, it's leaking, okay. Um, you know, when, you, when you're bluing the teeth, well, this is actually yellowing the teeth because it's yellow, it was better for on the camera. Um, again, ordered this online, use it quite a bit. Very, very good. I prefer the yellow to the blue, in all honesty, not just because it shows up on camera better, it just seems to be easy to see, full stop. We've got a torch, which doesn't have any batteries in by the feel of it and probably doesn't work. Nope, there you go, look. And we've got a little adapter for valves on tires because sometimes you can't always get in and that's quite a useful way of um, inflating tires if there's not a lot of room. Lastly, the last drawer of all toolbox tours, we've got the Dremel drawer. Bloody cool little machine actually. This is it's currently on its little extension and I have no idea what we're using it for, cleaning something up. Um, most of the time I use it with these little, um, what would you call them, almost like a little grinding wheel thing, flat disky kind of, yeah, one of those things anyway. Um, really, really good. They have these little expandable bits that you put the this over and then as you tighten it up, it swells and it grips and away you go. I use it loads. Ben got me one of these for one of my birthday or Christmas presents. And um, yeah, very, very cool. I wouldn't be without a Dremel very useful and it's been totally reliable and the bits aren't too expensive if you look after them wow that brings us to the end of episode five of andy mechanics toolbox tour this is as things are this video was shot today is i don't even know what the date is i don't know i'm gonna find out hang on Holy moly, it's the 25th of April, 2021. Where does time go? Anyway, I think between the five videos, we've probably covered about 130 drawers. There's been a lot of stuff we've gone through and it had to be broken down to different episodes. And like I said, maybe you won't find this one interesting. Maybe you will. It's always, I don't know. I'm, I'm always keen to find out what's in the drawers in other people's workshops. Um, this workshop isn't just used for fixing motorcycles or cars or trailers. I do a lot of fabrication work and making things. So it's quite a diverse range of tools and associated paraphernalia. There's even a little lathe in the corner and a pillar drill and welder and all sorts of stuff kicking around. So in fact, there's two lathes now. There's an old Myford on the bench that I'm currently doing up. Well, I'm going to start to do up at some point. Need some new bearings. Anyway. If you enjoyed this video, why not subscribe to the channel, give us a thumbs up, tell Mr. YouTube that you like what you see and he will hopefully propagate out through the very complicated algorithm uh, the fact that these videos should be watched by other people. You'll also find me on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Feel free to communicate through any of those portals. My personal email is down below in the description. So you can also email me and quite a lot of viewers do email me nowadays. Um, I can't always guarantee I'll get back to you, but I will do my very best. 
Now, if you want to support the channel, you can do that through Patreon or through oh, and or through PayPal. Um, the PayPal email address to use is the same as the normal one, which is andymechanic at live.co.uk. Um, any support, any donations, even a letter if you want to flick me a, a, a real letter that you've handwritten, um, feel free. I'll read it out in one of the live streams. We do a live stream every Sunday morning at 8.30 a.m. New Zealand time. Don't forget, New Zealand is in the future. So my Sunday is probably your Saturday. Okay, crew. Well, until next time, thanks for putting up with me. <laughs> All right, crew. Take care. Cheers. Over and out. And you get the Oh,